I'm Rod Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Glenn Hall Taylor's macabre adventure in pyromania. White flame burning bright. Starring Lyle Wagoner. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of The Zero Hour. even to those whose everyday job it is to seek out and combat its perpetrators. Sometimes arson is the work of evil doers in the so-called respectable strata of society. At other times, as in the present case, it is plotted in sordid surroundings such as the dingy, run-down flat in a dying section of a big city occupied by Red Wheeling and his wife Marge. Now it is early evening. Red in a soiled, threadbare bathrobe, and Marge in a faded housecoat are seated at the old-fashioned oak dining table. Shuffle the deck, Marge. Oh, Red, I want to finish the funny. Oh, come on, shuffle. Okay. <laughs> Good. Now cut them. Now look at the top card. Yeah? Now remember it and put it back in the deck. All right, now I'll shuffle again. Okay. Now, I haven't touched the cards, have I? No. Okay, count down three cards. One, two, three. Now, the next card is yours. Turn it face up. That's the wrong card. Well, it can't be. The book says the card will be the one hey, is right that you, after... Mom? Yeah. Well, hello, Mrs. Davis. Well, what's with the bathrobe, Brent? Well, I was just resting. Resting? From what? Oh, now, Mom, will you go get dressed? What for? I found a job for you. Oh, now, uh, wait a minute. I got two or three things lined up for myself that yeah, I was Yeah, and you've been handing me that line for the past six months. Six months in which you've been putting the bite on me for food and rent. Now, I've had it. Now, go get dressed. Well, wait a minute, Mrs. Davis. What is this job? You know that warehouse at Fifth and Bedford? Yeah. Well, I just made a deal for you with a guy who's tied in with it. Well, I don't want to work in no warehouse. You don't have to work there. All you got to do is burn it down. <laughs> This is Chief O'Connell. I'm calling from the warehouse fire at 15th and Bedford. It's a good chance this might be arson. Send over a couple of your best men, huh? Yeah, right. Out. Chief O'Connell? Right. Yeah, I'm Clem York, arson investigation. Ah, howdy. And I'm Bill Walker, also arson investigation chief. Hi. Glad you got over so quickly. The alarm came in about a half an hour ago. We don't know how long it was before it was turned in that the blaze started, but it couldn't have been too long. Yeah, looks like you've got it under control here. Yeah, we were lucky. Could have been a whopper. Flames are out, but we're checking for hot spots and doing some precautionary operations. Chief, what made you suspect it was arson? Oh, I got it right here in my car. Yeah, this uh, piece of glass, it's from one of those lower windows there. Doesn't look like ordinary smoke to me. I, I think it's from some chemical or some other material that develops an intense heat. Yeah, I think you're right. What do you make of it, Bill? Well, I hesitate to guess, but my hunch is that the smoke was from something highly volatile, though. Well, we'll take it with us and get it into the lab. I'll make some scrapings of the smoke and get it under the microscope. Probably photograph this stuff. Good, good. Is it cool enough over there for us to get close and poke around a bit? Well, yeah, but... Uh... 
Be careful, huh? Oh, by the way, Chief, uh, any witnesses around when it started? No, I haven't found any so far. I've asked the police who are holding back the crowd and guarding the intersections to ask around. Well, let us know, will you? Yeah, we will do. See you later. Hello? Marge, Red home yet? Oh, hi, Mom. No, he isn't. Well, he should have been home an hour ago. Yeah, well, maybe he forgot to take the matches with him. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Look, when he comes in... Oh, well, wait a sec. That you, Red? Yeah, honey. He just came in. I'll put him on. Hey, here. Well, who is it? It's Mom. She wants to talk to you. What about? I don't know. Talk to her and find out. Hi, Mrs. Davis. What kept you? Well, I went to the magic store. Where? The magic store. The fella just got in some new tricks. Oh, jeez. Will you never grow up? Do you know how long I've been waiting to hear how the job went? I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis. The job went okay. Did the place burn down? Well, it must have. When I left, the whole sky was lit up, and there were a lot of fire engines, too. Anyone see you? Well, of course not, Mrs. Davis. Good. Good. Oh, uh, Mrs. Davis, uh, when do I get paid? I'm collecting from the man tomorrow morning. Would you bring my share over early, huh? What's your rush? Well, I want to buy some of those tricks before the guy at the magic store sells them to somebody else. Oh, brother. Hello? Hello? Uh, she hung up. Arson, Clemmy York speaking. Oh, yeah. Bill Walker and I are working on that case. What'd you find out? Uh, that cinches it. It's arson, all right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, pal. Got something, huh? Yeah. The smoke on that glass was from magnesium. Real fireworks. Uh, you're not kidding. And there was nothing in that warehouse with a magnesium base. Well, that might tie in with something I got last night. A kid who'd been watching the fire told me he'd seen a guy hanging around the warehouse about 6 o'clock last evening. He threw away some cardboard boxes. Did the kid remember what the guy looked like? Well, just that he had red hair, was a young guy, maybe uh, 25 or 30. Uh. He said another kid picked up the boxes. The kid I talked to said he'd get in touch with his pal and get the boxes for me, if his pal still has them. I told him I checked with him this afternoon. Yeah, well, go ahead. Meanwhile, I'll call identification down at PD and get some mug shots on all the known red-headed arsonists. Well, we could show them to the kids. Maybe we'll turn up something. Gee, Marge, I just come from the magic store. Where do you see my new trick? It's real far out. Oh, Red, can't you see that I'm reading? Well, it'll only take a minute. Look. Well, what's it supposed to be? Well, it's just two rings. One inside the other. Here, see if you can take them apart. That's the trick. Uh, oh, but for crying out loud, Red, I can't make it work. Oh, it's easy. Here, give me. Hmm. Now, now, wait a minute, Marge. I can do it. Uh, let's see. Ha, hmm. Some genius. Yes, well, that's, that's funny. It worked at the store. You here, Red? Yeah, right here, Mrs. Davis. You stupid jerk. You mental midget. Well, what's wrong, Mrs. Davis? I send you out on a simple little job, and you blow it. What are you talking about? I did the job. I set fire to the warehouse. You set fire to a warehouse. I told you Fifth and Bedford. You set fire to a warehouse at 15th and Bedford. You burned down the wrong joint. Did you find that other kid, Bill? Yeah, he still had the boxes, too. They're over there on the table. The stickers on them indicate they came from Newton's Sporting Goods Shop on Main Street. They contain signal flares, you know, like yachtsmen use. Ah, uh, magnesium. Did you check with them? There was only one clerk on duty, and he hadn't sold any flares in the past few days. Well, I think we better try again. Find out if a red-headed guy bought any more flares this afternoon. Why? There was another warehouse fire while you were out. Now, this time at Fifth and Bedford. Might be more than a coincidence. Uh, they saw a brilliant white flame when the fire broke out. Could mean that magnesium was used again. Yeah, sounds like it. By the way, did that second kid recognize any of the pictures? No, but I did get a character clue on our suspect. What kind? Well, a red-headed guy had a deck of cards with him. He tried to show the kid some tricks, but he couldn't do them. Uh, it could make him anything from a would-be card shop to just some kind of a show-off. 
I guess all we can do now is wait for that sporting goods store to open in the morning. Where's Red? He's out. Hmm. Picking up some new tricks, I suppose. There's one trick I wish that jerk would learn. Why, what's that? How to make himself disappear. It'd sure make life easier. Oh, Mom, why are you always picking on him? So he made a little mistake. Little mistake? He made a king-size boo-boo. The guy that wanted the warehouse at Fifth and Bedford burned down paid good money for the job. Hey, why did he want it burned down? Well, it's his racket. He buys a lot of stuff on consignment and puts it in the warehouse. Now, just before the fire, he has it moved out. Everybody thinks the stuff is burned. So he declares bankruptcy to get out of hock and then sells the stuff to a fence and keeps the money. Oh. Well, then everything's going to be all right. How can you say that? Well, the reason Red's not here is that he went out to make things right for you. How? He left to burn down the fifth in Bedford warehouse. Now, that ought to make you proud of him. Oh, no. Why, what's the matter? That's Jughead. He's really fixed it now. What do you mean? He's setting the fire you wanted. When Red burned the wrong building, the guy figured the deal was off and moved all the stuff back into the warehouse this morning. Oh, now he'll really be bankrupt. The lab reported to me on a piece of window glass from the second fire, Bill. Magnesium. Yeah, it's got to be the same firebug. We got a fix on him. His name's Charles Wheeling, alias Red Wheeling. And how'd you come up with that? I went back to the sporting goods store this morning and showed him the mug shots. One of the clerks identified him. And to cinch it, the store just put that brand in stock this week. Did you find out where he lives? Well, the closest I could come was to locate where he lived six months ago. No forwarding address, naturally. Uh, Should we have the police put out an APB on him? And there might be a way to find him sooner. Oh, how? I checked on the owner of the second warehouse that was burned. Turns out it's owned by a dummy corporation. So they had a convenient fire. Yeah, could be. Now, if they did... And if Wheeling was hired to do the job, getting that owner's name could clear up this case. The incorporation papers are being looked up right now. Uh, Mr. York? Yeah, right over here. I'm from Identification Bureau. These were sent over to us by Fire Chief O'Connell. Hmm. What are those things? One of those puzzles that has two rings you're supposed to separate. <laughs> you can figure it out. They were found in the warehouse that burnt yesterday. Well, how come the fire didn't blacken that chrome? Well, they were found under a packing case. I guess the flames never got to them. It's all in that report, sir. Okay, we'll uh, we'll study it. And uh, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, good luck with it. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Now, for one thing, they pulled some prints off the rings. Yeah, they're wheelings, all right. Which definitely places him in the building prior to the fire. We still have to find him. I got an idea. Let's have copies of this picture made. We'll send them to the police in the 19th and 20th precincts. But why only those two, Bill? Well, Wheeling's last known address was in the 19th, right? Right. And the shop where he bought the flares was in the 20th. Yeah. The way I figure it, he must be somewhere in the area of the 19th and 20th. Now, he wouldn't go all the way back to his old neighborhood to buy signal flares. Hey, hey, I just thought of something. Oh, what? Didn't you say one of those kids you talked to said the red-headed guy was trying to do some plain card tricks? That's right. All right, now, before we give the police the pictures, let's look in the yellow pages, find out what trick stores or magic shops are in that 19th and 20th precincts. Maybe we can pull something out of the hat ourselves. You guys home? In here, Mom. In here, Mrs. Davis. How long will it take you to pack? Pack? What for, Mrs. Davis? That warehouse guy is gunning for us. We gotta split. We gotta get out of town fast. Oh, gee, Mrs. Davis, I got things to do. You big oaf. Now you get your butt off of that chair and start packing. But why should we run away from the warehouse guy? I burnt down his building for him. Yeah, and everything he owned with it. He's got a gun. That's why we should run away from him. He wants to make little round holes in your big square head. Oh, well, okay, Mrs. Davis, but you don't have to get so nervous. I'll go. You just stay here. Stay here? You idiot. He's after me, too. Oh, that's terrible, Mrs. Davis. He can't shoot a woman. Oh, Red, oh, please, come on, now get going. A man like that will shoot anybody. <gasps> the warehouse man. Now, it's the cab driver. I brought you some extra bags. He's bringing them up. What do you think you're doing? Well, I don't want to leave my cards and puzzles and tricks behind. They're in this drawer with my socks. Come in. Come in. There 
ain't locked. Hello? You ain't the cab driver. No, ma'am. I'm from the fire department. I'm arson investigator Bill Walker. Here's my ID. This is my partner, Clem York. Uh, what do you want? We want Red Wheeling. Uh, I'm Red Wheeling. Uh, what do you want me for? We have a warrant I... for your arrest. You... Let's go, Mrs. Davis. No, you... You know my name? Yeah, we have your name on a warrant, too. <laughs> you certainly don't have a warrant for me. No, but you better stay in town. We'll want you as a material witness. Now, way to cut and pick a minute, you guys. You can't Watch just walk in... <laughs> oh, hell, fellas. This isn't a real gun. Look. <laughs> when you pull the trigger, the barrel opens up and a little flag rolls down, and it's got a sign on it that says, Bang. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, you're really something else, Red. You didn't give a damn whether or not those fires you set might have killed people. But now you make the scene with a gun that's only a trick one. Oh, I, I got a lot of tricks. Hey, look at these cards. Yeah. Now, give me a number from one to ten. Uh, ten. It's a good round number, Red. In years. And I think you're going to get it. Frisk him, Bill. Yeah. Just in case he's got something up his sleeve. Then we'll get the cuffs on him and Mrs. Davis. And we'll take him downtown. <laughs> I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes, exercise your imagination, and join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. <laughs>